Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, this second video for today, um, I will be doing a collection update. Um, got a couple few things in the mail, but uh, went out and got some stuff as well. So I figured, uh, you know, start the week off right with one of these. So let's just go ahead. Got a couple uh, records in the mail first up well both of these are bootlegs but first up just got this one earlier today we've got Aerosmith a lost angel in Philadelphia 90 as in 1990 there we go now you can see the whole thing um this is a seven inch it's just a single it's got two songs from the uh show from January 21st 1990 in Philadelphia couple of hours from here um this show has been heavily bootlegged i just actually ordered another final bootleg of this that's on the way not the complete show unfortunately um but this show has been heavily bootlegged over the years in both audio and video format um i do have uh this on dvd i would love if you know aerosmith would officially release it or one of these bootleg companies out there would release it. And that's the thing. Um, this is probably the newest Aerosmith bootleg out there. I don't know what year this came out. But, you know, with all these bootleg companies and bootleg labels out there, Aerosmith is one of the bands, in terms of vinyl, that never really gets anything. I mean, the other one, next band you're going to see is Motorhead. They always got bootlegs coming out. Kiss certainly does. Uh, Van Halen, there's been a couple newer Van Halen ones that have come out. Um, but Aerosmith, out of the, out of the big bands, Aerosmith is one of the ones that they don't really do any vinyl bootlegs. I don't get it. But anyway, this is number five out of 50. So pretty cool within the first five numbers. And this is on clear vinyl, which is pretty cool. And the songs on here, the A side is Angel, of course that's in the title, and the B side is Dream On, of course Air, probably Aerosmith's signature song to a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, this is, like I said, this is only out of 50 copies, just randomly found this on Discog, so I grabbed it. Uh, one of the harder to find Aerosmith bootlegs, because they only made so many. The hardest one I already have, it's called Stamp. They only made like 25 copies of that, but I do have one, and it was not cheap. Um, next up, like I said, Motorhead, we've got Tales of Glory. This is from Lamours, which was a club in Brooklyn, uh, August 10th, 1983. This is a, a radio broadcast. It says limited to 500 copies. There's no number on here. Uh, not even on the inside of the label or the vinyl itself or anything. There's no number to differentiate which one it is, but that's okay. Um, not sure which tour this was. It, it doesn't say, um, but anyway, good stuff on here. Um, uh, some of the, honestly, some of the lesser known, like Iron Horse and Born to Lose is on here. Another perfect day. There's an interview with Lemmy, which is cool. But, you know, always out to get more Motorhead vinyl bootlegs. So that's it. That's the only music I've got. Um, got some movies here. Got a laser disc, actually. A Japanese laser disc here. I did not know that this movie was on laser disc until more recently. Um, on Facebook, I am a member of Laser Disc Forever, which is a group all about laser disc buying, selling, trading, and just general laser disc discussion. And one of the guys, actually, how I found out about the group, I was watching a guy on here's videos, and he had mentioned this film in the group, so I got in. Um, but I got this off of uh, eBay. This popped up on eBay. I got it for a good price, about what I wanted to pay for it, and it is none other. Then The Patriot with Steven Seagal. Again, this is a Japanese pressing, has the original OBI strip, which is nice. Um, of course, did not get a laser disc release in America. Uh, Seagal's first directed video film, I think, in Japan. It might have got a theatrical release. I'm not sure about that. Um, 
but here in America, this movie went straight to uh, video. It also aired on HBO. It was an HBO Presents movie. Um, but I do like this one. Of course, it's a little light on the action uh, because they actually cut most of that out of the film. Um, but I still like it nonetheless. So my uh, Steven Seagal laser disc collection is complete. I have all his good theatrical movies with the exception of Exit Wounds because, of course, that never got a laser disc release. But Seagal laser disc collection is complete. Um, I did get a couple. DVDs and Blu-rays here. I'll do the DVDs first. I got all these at Walmart. I was surprised. Walmart actually had um, a nice little selection this time. So first up, I did get the two DVDs I got were uh, two TV series. This is a complete series, and it is The Secret World of Alex Mack. Yes, uh, got this. This was like $10. Bucks. Um, very cool to get this in the collection um i was very surprised that nickel i guess nickelodeon did not care about this show or um since it was a canadian show maybe nickelodeon didn't own the rights i'm not sure about that um but i was very surprised that they sub licensed this one out because typically they do not do that um unless they had like the deal they had with shop factory of course all those are out of print now um but very surprised that, you know, this was put out by Mill Creek, of all people. But, yeah, complete series, all four seasons. It's four seasons. Yeah, all four seasons are on here, which is very cool. Um, does come with a slip cover. The only shitty thing is, of course, it's Mill Creek. So the way the discs are set up, like, season one is all on one disc, 13 episodes. I don't agree with that. And then from there... They kind of run it together because, like, the end of Season 2 and the beginning of Season 3 are on one disc. And then Season 4 is the only one that has its own... I mean, Season 4 and the rest of Season 3 are the only ones that have their own discs, which is kind of shitty. But, uh, yeah, good show. I do remember watching this um, when I was a kid. And uh, looking forward to checking it out again. And uh, Larissa Olenek, who played Alex Mack, she was really cute back then, I will say. Um, you know, I, I don't know what she looks like now. I'm sure she still looks good. But anyway, good stuff. And then very surprised they had this one. But they had the first season of Freakazoid, which is very cool. Great cartoon. I used to watch this a lot back in the day on the Kids WB and also Cartoon Network. Steven Spielberg was one of the producers of this show through his company, a co company, company is not a word, company, Amblin Entertainment. Um, but yeah, very happy. I also ordered season two off of eBay. I think season two is out of print because it was a little more expensive, but I did order it. So I have that coming. Um, so that'll be in the next collection update, but very cool. And then I did get two Blu-rays. Um, I guess they had this because Godzilla just came out, or Godzilla vs. Kong just came out. But I did get the uh, Steelbook Blu-ray of Mothra. Yes, uh, one of Godzilla's uh, rogues gallery, so to speak. But they had this on sale. It was like 13 bucks, But really cool Steelbook. I love the design here. This has both the... Japan and the American versions. Uh, there's a couple features on here. Um, overseas, I think it was Eureka over in the UK. They did a release of this that has some more features. So I'll grab that sometime down the road. I'm not in a rush to grab that. But uh, this is very cool. Um, so looking forward to checking this one out. Um, and I, surprisingly, they didn't have any of the other Godzilla or Kong stuff because I would have got some. Oh, well. And this was very cool. This is a box set. Um, I was very surprised that they had this, but I grabbed it. It is none other than, speaking of Train Factory, Shout Factory, whatever, um, it is the Fly Collection. Again, I was really, really surprised that Walmart had this. Um, so I definitely jumped on it. Definitely had to get it. Um, had to grab this one while, they, while it was on sale. 
this was 40 bucks and I'm like okay it's five movies I could you know I could do that that works for me brother <laughs> um, but I did take actually my brother opened this for some reason uh, but I did keep the uh, the insert in there and of course this has the original fly from 1958 I was gonna say 58 I was right Vincent Price and then we have Return of the Fly again Vincent Price um the fly does not have new features this has a new commentary but the original fly has the features from the older releases so it's all good and then we have the final the third and final one in the original series Vincent Price is not in this one uh, but this is the curse of the fly and there's no new features on here and then we have the classic remake oh my god a remake that i actually like yeah they have made some good remakes this is one of them but we have the classic remake with jeff goldblum um bunch of new features on here as well as the original features so good to go on that one and last but certainly not least we do have the sequel the fly 2 which there is again a bunch of new features on here in addition to the older stuff as well so good stuff um again i was very surprised that walmart had this and you know they usually don't get this kind of stuff um last time they had this set on sale i missed out on i think they also had the omen collection all the original omen films which i did miss out on that one i wanted to grab it um but maybe one day I'll get it. But again, very surprised that they had this. Definitely had to grab it. And then I went, well, the first couple of these I got online. Um, I did go a little crazy with the comics. Um, these first three, again, I got off of eBay. I did get some more. Since I'm trying to complete the, the collection, I did get some more Fright Night comics so first up we've got issue four and then issue five so out of the first five the only one i don't have is issue two right now and then i did get the fright night part two adaptation which is very cool so now comics actually adapted uh both of the fright night movies which is very nice issue one and two was the adaptation of the first movie, and then it, or the second movie got its own. Not, I wouldn't say it's like a, a graphic novel, but you know, had some extra pages and stuff in it, which is cool. But yep, um, like I said, definitely trying to uh, wrap up that. You know, grab the the remaining issues and such that I'm trying to get of that and finish that series up relatively soon here. And then the rest of these, I went to the local comic store. And uh, went a little crazy here, but I hadn't gone in quite a while. But he also, um, you know, he definitely takes care of me when I go in there. And he gave me some free ones as well. And then I got some uh, magazines, and he gave me some free magazines. So, yeah. But I did get, again, a bunch here, as you could just see. First up, we've got issue two of The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. Very nice. This was the first um, ongoing um, original Indiana Jones comic. Marvel had the light, the uh, the license back then. Um, after they did adaptions of Raiders and Temple of Doom, that was the first ongoing original comic series for Indy. And then got some Angel, uh, the Buffy character. We've got issue fourteen. This is the original uh, Dark Horse run. I'm trying to get all these. And then we've got, uh, this was Angel number one. This was a kind of a, a reboot mini series that they did, uh, I think right before they lost the license. So this is the first issue of that. And a lot of these were really cool. This one's really, really cool. We've got issue one of Bucky O'Hare. Yes, of course, Bucky O'Hare. Star Fox before Star Fox. Really, really cool stuff. Love this franchise. I uh, was very happy to find this. 
And then I got, speaking of now comics, got two issues of the Twilight Zone series that they did. First up is the first issue. Really cool cover on there. And then we've got issue nine, which does have the original 3D glasses, which is very cool. Um, there was a couple Fright Night ones that they did that had 3D stuff in it. Um, they were some of the specials, which most of those were just reprints of the older comics, but they added the 3D stuff in it. So, either way, it's still cool. Um, got some X-Men here. First up, we've got the uh, X-Men Blue Team run here. We've got issue 23. And then same run, we've got issue 87, the Magneto War. So, yeah, this is when, in the late 90s, when Magneto was going through some changes, which is pretty cool. And then we've got a uh, all-new X-Men special event, issue one of two, limited series, Brood Day of Wrath. Pretty cool cover on there, so we'll see. And the last X-Men title I got is the Uncanny X-Men issue 335. The uh, the onslaught and apocalypse come. So yeah, and this is when Wolverine lost his animantium and had wooden claws. So a little bit of a different Wolverine there. And Marvel actually, speaking of Marvel, they just picked up the license to Alien and Predator. Uh, so I did get the first issue of Alien. This is one of the uh, variant covers, which is very cool. So very nice see what what happens there next up we've got gi joe snake eyes dead game issue one um of course the snake eyes movie is coming out i think this year i don't know because of covid and all that but we'll see so it's it's not a continuation it's a remake actually but it's just on snake eyes so we'll see what happens um next up we've got robocop citizens arrest issue one And then we've got Usagi Yojimbo Wanderer's Road issue one. I don't, this is actually the first Usagi Yojimbo comic I have. I don't even have any of the ones he was in with the Turtles. So there you go. And next up, we've got uh, Keanu. Keanu Reeves just uh, started doing a comic. This is the first issue. It's called Berserker. So looking forward to that. And we got some. Uh, more Power Rangers here. We've got issue 50 of Mighty Morphin. This is part of the uh, Necessary Evil storyline. And then we've got the first issue of Draken New Dawn miniseries. And then I got a bunch of Punisher. I went a little crazy on the, uh, the Punisher stuff. But we've got... First up, this is... After, I think this is the the fourth volume. I'm not sure. It, it's so weird with comics. But this is when they kind of rebooted Punisher to be darker and grittier. So we've got issue five of that lineup. And then we've got issue seven. Um, I have some of the other ones of these. But right now. And then this is the newest run of Punisher. This is issue 14. Like, Marvel's calling it the Legacy line or something. I don't really care. I just kind of read them, you know. Then we've got um, a uh, two-issue limited series. We've got The Origin of Microchip. This is the first issue. Pretty cool. And then next, these are all the next... Next four, these are from the first regular Punisher series. So we've got issue 22, uh, Ninja Training Camp. That's pretty cool. And we got issue 31, uh, Biker Bloodbath, and Frank's got a beard, which is nice. And then we've got issue 76. And issue 79. And then this one is from 
the second regular Punisher series. I think this is volume three. This is issue 11. And then one, two, three, got four issues of the original Punisher War Journal run. Um, first up, we've got issue 29, him and Ghost Rider, and then issue 30, the second part of the story, once again with Ghost Rider. And then we've got issue 34, and issue 52. So cool, very cool stuff. And then the last Punisher comic that I got is issue two of the original Warzone run. Uh, I only the only other issue the original Warzone run I have is the first issue, so I don't have many of them, which is cool. And then these were all the free ones. He gave me five free ones, which is pretty cool. So we've got the Immortal She-Hulk issue one, which does have a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, as you can see at the top. And then we've got the newest Wolverine lineup. This is one of the variant covers of the first issue. And then we have another variant cover of issue seven. And then we have the newest run of Werewolf by Night. This is one of the variant covers of issue one. And then we've got the uh, Night in Black run that they're doing right now. This is Black Knight issue one which is pretty cool. So very, very nice. And then um, I did get some magazines from him. Because he does have some magazines, but he's bringing out more. Um, so I got the first three. No, one. Okay, well, I'll, I'll differentiate. But I got this one, which is Comic Scene Issue 45, which has the shadow on the cover. This was free. We've got uh, Sin, Fat Sin Fantastique, February 1993, Babylon 5 on the cover. It, you can see at the bottom it says Ninja Turtles 3, so that's why I grabbed it. We've got the December 93 issue of Sin Fat, Sin Fat T, I cannot talk, Sin Fat Fastique, uh, Demolition Man's on there. This one was free. Um, right? One, two, yeah, okay. This was free, we've got, or no. Yeah, it was. Anyway, Sinfest Fantastic June 94, the Flintstones movie. Love the Flintstones movie, to be honest. And the last fin, Sin Fantastic, I cannot talk. August 94, again, we got the shadow on there. And then this one was free. We've got Sci-Fi Entertainment, which was Sci-Fi Channel's magazine. This is August 1997. We've got Men in Black on the cover, which is very cool. And then the rest of the magazines that I got were all Impact. Ordered a bunch more of these. First up, we've got January 1998, which has Tomorrow Never Dies on the cover. Um... But there's also an interview with Stallone in here for Copland, which was pretty cool. Um, and another thing that was interesting, it talks about um, Inferno with Jean-Claude Van Damme, which became Desert Heat. It said it was going to be directed by Irvin Kirshner for PM Entertainment. So that is actually quite interesting. Um... Yeah, I, I did want to mention that. There was was there something else in this one? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there's a uh, interview with Stallone in here again about Copland, and I did want to show that off quickly here. And there's a little write up about Brandon Lee which is nice. Apparently there was a documentary. I never saw this documentary. Yeah, the weird thing is the Copland interview is all the way, it's like the last article in here. 
But yeah. There's an interview with Stallone. And he talks about, like, not wanting to do action films anymore. You know, I don't, he says here, I don't really care about doing action films. I thought Daylight was okay, but I really wanted my character to die. I told them I can't survive this. It's impossible. Um, I was holding my breath for five minutes in ice cold water, which you can't actually do for more than 10 seconds. They said, we want to make a sequel. What sequel? When they wanted me to do a sequel to Cliffhanger, I told them there's no way my character would ever go back up a mountain again. He quit. But they wrote Cliffhanger 2 anyway. They said, okay, you can climb dams for a living. You can be a dam repairman. These are the things that you don't hear about. It's unbelievable. Well, I disagree. I actually love Daylight. And I'm glad that Stallone made more action films. But that's just me. But this is when he was trying to reinvent himself. And, you know, Copland did well, but people were really confused. But Copland's still a great movie. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. And then, speaking of Van Damme, we've got the May 1998 issue with Double Team. On the cover, just watched Double Team not too long ago. Still a very fun Jean-Claude Van Damme film. Um, talks about Michael Dudikoff saying he's busier than ever on the B-movie circuit, which is cool. Because I like Michael Dudikoff. Um, talks about Le La Legionnaire with Van Damme being a remake of a French film. I'm sure, you know... That kind of was. This is interesting. Um, Casper Van Dien was going to play a Navy SEAL taking on a gang of terrorists who have taken over a nuclear reactor. Of course, that movie never got made. Um, talks about Jeff Speakman doing Land of the Free. Good movie. <laughs> one, of the, one of the better Jeff Speakman movies, to be honest. Talks about, you know, Captain Amer doing a Captain America movie in 1998. Of course, we didn't get one until many years later. Um, here's another write-up for Land of the Free. So, again, these, like, again, I love looking up, you know, finding these old magazines because they're really cool. And they don't make stuff like this anymore. Seagal talking about Blood on the Moon, which never got made. I didn't realize it screamed too as an action film, but sure. <laughs> Here's the write up for Double Team. Got a nice write up about Sammo Hung in there, which is pretty cool. Just want to make sure I hit all the uh, U.S. Marshals with Wesley Snipes and Tommy Lee Jones. Underrated movie, in my opinion. There's an interview with J.J. Perry, who's still a stunt guy. He played uh, Scorpion and Cyrax in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. He was also Lyndon Ashby's stunt double in the first movie. But there's an interview with him in here talking about Recoil. One of the best Gary Daniels movies in my opinion. Very fun flick. And next up we've got the November 1998 issue with uh, Lara Croft on the cover there. Talking about, you know, different uh, video games, you know, how that was going to, they thought that was going to be like the next generation of action heroes, which I guess in kind of a way it was, but, um, <laughs> talks about Pamela Anderson being on, um, VIP that was starting at the time, John Woo directing Mission Impossible 2, which this magazine came out two years before that movie did.
Speaking of Michael Dudikoff, it talks about Black Thunder, Blade being a big hit at the box office. Um, says Van Dam, you know, in here talking about his drug addiction, which this is around the time he got sober, which is good. So, yeah. Clint Eastwood talking about Space Cowboys, which again came out two years after this magazine was written. Of course, Simon says with Rodman, horrible movie. <laughs> um, it talks about, again, slasher films like Halloween H2O and Scream. I don't know. <laughs> there you go, right there. I didn't realize that these were action films, but sure. <laughs> That's what Fangoria is for. Um, but yeah, it just talks about different video games, like Small Soldiers is in there. Great game. I'll have the, the Small Soldiers PlayStation game. It's really fun. But just, again, taking a peek. There's an interview with Shannon Lee. And yeah, that's about it for that one. Next up, I've got some more Van Damme. March 1999 on here. You guys know I love my Van Damme. Um, says Chuck Norris was going to do Logan's War. Of course, he did make that movie for TV. Very cool stuff. Arnold going to do a uh, live act or a movie based off the SWAT TV series. Of course, that came out a couple years later without Arnold. Um, Talking about a sequel to Blade. Stallone doing Detox before it came out. Like, talking about that. Since, like, Van Damme was worried about the Millennium. But it says that was reported by the National Enquirer. So, yeah, they're such a great source for news. Um, yeah, I definitely don't believe that. But it says, what's on the card for Van Damme? Um, you know, talking about... Universal Soldier, The Return, Desert Heat, Abominable, which that unfortunately never got made. Um, apparently he was one of the people considered to play the devil in End of Days. That would have been kind of cool. But that did not happen. Interview with the other Van Damme, Daniel Bernhardt. <laughs> I did like Daniel Bernhardt. So, and I'm glad that he came back to the movies. I know he went away for a while to raise his daughter, which is fine, but. The uh, Crow Stairway to Heaven TV series, that's pretty cool. That's about it for that one. Next up, we got August 1999, which none other than uh, this cover folds out, which is pretty cool. But, of course, that's when uh, Phantom Menace came out overseas. Because you got to remember, back then, movies didn't come out exactly the same time as they, as they do now. Yeah, speaking of J.J. Perry, there's a Mortal Kombat TV series right up. <laughs> speaking of Star Wars toys, there's a write-up about that because... 
You know, they made so many damn of them. So damn many of them is what I meant to say. I'm dyslexic today, I guess. <laughs> Interview with Samo Hung. Very cool. Running Red with Jeff Speakman, the last good Jeff Speakman movie, unfortunately. And then we've got September 99 with Wild Wild West on the cover. <laughs> Go into the Wild Wild West. But what's cool, there's a write-up about Universal Soldier The Return. Very underrated sequel, in my opinion. I actually skipped the, the first page. There we go. There's the first page. My bad. Um, again, it talks about some of the upcoming Van Damme films. Um, talking about him being on uh, Friends. Again, Desert Heat, Abominable. Here's another, um, not an interview, but it's a write-up about Shannon Lee and High Voltage, which is a really fun uh, directed video action film. Uh, Isaac Florentine directed it. I just watched it more recently. And there is... A interview with Ray Park. Of course, he played none other than Darth Maul, which is very cool. And then next, we got December 99 with The World Is Not Enough on the cover. The fuck is the washer? Okay, it stopped for now, hopefully. Knock on wood. <laughs> Um, yeah, other than, well, no, here's, um, shit, I just passed it. Here's a write-up about Shanghai Noon, fun Jackie Chan film. And then jumping ahead, we got January 2000, End of Days with Arnold, one of my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger films, to be honest, and one of the more underrated ones, again. But there's that. Yeah, that's kind of it for this one. Yeah. Then jumping ahead a few years, I got some more recent, well, not really recent, but we've got April 2004. It says, You Don't Know Jack. It's got Jackie Chan, an interview with Jack Nicholson, and uh, Jack Bauer, which is pretty cool from 24. But there's some other cool stuff in here. Again, we got the interview with. Jack Nicholson. Then we've got November 2004. Jackie Chan on the cover, this time for a new police story, which I do like that one. And uh, get to that in a second. But there's an interview with Vin Diesel, 
which is pretty cool. And then, again, the cover story of New Police Story. Then we've got November 2004, which has Shaolin Soccer on the cover. Believe it or not, I have not seen that or um, Kung Fu Hustle. i got to definitely check those movies out. I've heard a lot of good things about them. But I grabbed this one nonetheless. And then we've got January 2005, which has Blade Trinity on the cover, unfortunately. But um, there's some... Other stuff in here, which is why I grabbed this one. There is a article about, if I can get to it. <laughs> well, here's a interview with Jackie Chan, so that's why I grabbed it. You know, that's important to me. So, yeah, that's why. One of the main reasons why I grabbed it, but there's also... Again, it's probably like all the way in the back here. There's an article about the Street Fighter with Sonny Chiba coming out on DVD, which is cool. But there's a write-up about National Treasure. So, I like that movie. I wish they would have made a third one. Here it is. The Street Fighter was getting a DVD release. Um, actually, all of them with Sonny Chiba. So, I figured that's cool, too. Yeah, I like those movies. Then we've got August 2005, we've got Unleashed with Jet Li on the cover. One of my favorite Jet Li American films, to be honest. One of the, one of the best ones that he did. And um, doesn't get talked about like most of his American films. And last but certainly not least, jumping ahead, we got November 2008 with Van Damme on the cover. For JCVD, which was again supposed to be the movie that was going to give him a comeback, but it didn't really pan out that way, which was stupid, um, in my opinion, because Van Damme deserves it because it's fucking Van Damme. But anyway, um, let me pull that one up here. We got the write up about that, but very cool. So anyway, that is it. Um, like I said, went out and got some things, got some stuff in the mail. Figured I might as well get another video up for you guys and start the week off. So anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.